Okay, go. Right, hello, welcome. Um, welcome to everyone. Um, and thank you for joining the benefits to business of the film and TV industry in Suffolk. Um, we're really glad to have you all here today. And um, it's great to be joined by Screen Suffolk and Vivo Clean, who will be presenting to you during the course of the next hour or so. Um, the annual East Suffolk Business Festival is an opportunity for businesses to learn something new, find out what's happening in their local area and know how they can get involved and find out how to access local support services. For 2022, this year, the theme for this year's business festival is all about things digital, and the events will include the launch of new digital business support programs, digital tech demos, information on local digital projects, and a wide range of uh, workshops, webinars, and learning seminars. All, all the events are being held online, so this meeting is being recorded, and, but this will enable local businesses to access the support and information they need more conveniently um, as and when they as, as and when they want it. So I don't. Um, so just to, just to continue, um, if you would like to ask any questions throughout today's event, please use the um, question and answer button at the bottom of the screen, and um, and and we'll um, we'll get round to you as soon as we can. Um, there'll be a short poll at the end of the event to help us shape future events and activities within the business festival and we'd all ask, uh, um, ask that you uh, participate in that. So without any further ado, I'll hand over to Screen Suffolk. All right, thanks Simon. Uh, I'm just going to bring up a presentation on screen so we can... Can you see a screen with the... Yeah. Yes. Fine. So you've got the, uh, the slide, sort of the, the first slide you can see should be the benefit to business of the film and TV industry in Suffolk. Is that correct? No, we can see the pier at the moment. Oh, right, no, we can see it. Yeah, now we can see it. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to start by um, introducing Jim and I. Um, we both work for Screen Suffolk and our roles are... Um, operations and business development managers um, but on a day-to-day -day basis we permit filming um, on behalf of the council. Um, my background is in television production. I'm, I worked um, in London for, for a long while at ITV um, and I worked up from a runner to a producer director and then uh, for various reasons ended up coming back to Suffolk and um, uh, got involved with Screen Suffolk which was Fantastic. And Jim's background um, is in documentary filmmaking. Um, he does uh, projections. Um, he does video mapping, he does amazing um, projections onto buildings um, and all sorts of things. So we, we've both got background in, in the industry. Um, yeah. So I'm going to sort of take over from Rachel for a little bit and talk a bit about Screen Suffolk, where we're from and what we do. So we were launched in um, December 2016 and we're the film office for the county of Suffolk. Um, and we were set up when all of the councils came together within the Suffolk district and decided to offer a film office service, uh, which is a um, we act as a uh, film office is a, an organisation that acts as a bridge between um, a production company and the council. Um, our expect expertise is knowing what a film production requires uh, when it comes into the county to use lots of the locations that we've got. So we work on behalf of all the councils in Suffolk with all the film inquiries. And this could be anything from a television show such as Love It or List It, uh, where they might be shooting general views and B-rolls around our wonderful countryside. Um, but we also deal with much larger productions for film and television. We, and we deal with companies like Amazon, the BBC, Netflix and Channel 4. And sometimes they come to Suffolk for a day and other times they come for a much longer period. I'm going to give you a, a case study of what something that happened last summer in East Suffolk to explain the sort of role that we take. Now, the film office really benefits the county. And the reason that it benefits the county is because of all the economic benefits that filming brings into a region. So if a production comes in and they're staying for a while, they need lots of support activity to enable the filming to happen. So that includes things like accommodation, power generators, toilets, catering, cleaning facilities, 
and local crew uh, that can work on the production while they're in the area. And our main aim is to bring in as much filming into Suffolk as possible. And we've had success working with films such as The Dig, which was shot in East Suffolk, the personal, personal history of David Copperfield, and Yesterday also shot in East Suffolk. So large films bring in the most money and require the most facilities, and that's where sort of businesses locally can benefit. I'm just now going to show you a showreel which covers some of the productions that have been in Suffolk since we started. So they are some of the productions that we've had the pleasure to work on over the last five years. And, and, you know, it's been great to help bring those projects to Suffolk and to help, you know, make all those locations happen. Um, and you saw from some of those sort of headline figures within the, within the showreel that it's been a, a great five years. Um, before we, um, before Screen Suffolk launched, um, obviously there wasn't a sort of a good way to report numbers of filming days but only 30 filming days were reported um, the year before Screen Suffolk um, came and, you know, had its, had its uh, launch in 2016. Um, and last year was our most successful year with 242 filming days, um, which is just amazing. You know, we didn't know how things were going to go after lockdowns and pandemic, but obviously the the hunger for content is very large and it's been it's been a, it's had a great sort of impact on the screen industries that you know we need more and more contact content for people to view um so yes we we had a, a great year last year I and mean, we've had 850 filming days since since our launch um and we do a calculation that for each filming day on average um 13,000 pounds um is sort of pumped into the local economy which in 850 filming days, it means that we've generated 11 million pounds of local economic impact. Um, and not only do we permit filming on behalf of the councils, but we also look after um, private locations as well as council locations. We've got over 530 locations registered for filming. Um, we've got a crew database with 493 local crew registered, um, which is just, it's great. So we've got everything productions need to come here to work um, and yeah you can just th those figures sort of speak for themselves Jim <laughs> okay. so I'm just going to talk about some of the locations that we've got um, as Rachel mentioned we've got we look after and permit filming on all council land and properties but we also have a number of private locations um, and all these dots here all the blue areas these are locations that have been used in filming since we started in 2016 and you can see there's a, there's a very good spread. Um, there's lots along the East Coast, um, all the way through Alba, Thorpe, uh, Thorpe Ness, 
Southwold, there's been a lot up in Lowestoft and also down in Felix though as well. And here's an example of the locations that we've got in the spread around the county. Um, all the different symbols mean different things. There's a red building for a warehouse, um, or there might be a holiday park. Um, and this is, can all be searched interactively via our website on a Google map. And if an organization does decide to sign up with us and offer their location out for filming, it goes on to uh, a location hub, which can be searched by location managers from around the world. And you can search for categories such as house or Georgian period, or farmhouse or an air airfield or beach. It makes it very easy for location managers to find us. Um, one of our projects we worked on last year, um, when we, where we were contacted by a location manager looking for a specific location. Um, and what we do is we, when we get contacted by location managers, they tell us the sort of thing they're looking for. And we go onto our locations hub and we create a package of locations for them to look at. Um, and, the, and Magpie Murders came to us um, and it's just um, launched on BritBox yesterday. We we're very excited about it. Um, and they came to us and they were, it's a series, murder mystery series. Um, it's kind of a murder mystery within a murder mystery. It's spanning two time periods, the 1950s and the um, and, and, and present day. Um, and they were looking for a quintessentially Suffolk village. And uh, we took them to, we, we, we gave them a whole package of villages for them to look at all around Suffolk. The book is set in Suffolk. It's um, written by Anthony Horowitz, who uh, is based in the region. So it was specifically Suffolk they were looking for. So we thought, where is the most Suffolk looking Suffolk villages? And we showed them several, several places. They narrowed it down to a few in mid, uh, Baber, mid Suffolk. Um, so they narrowed it down to sort of Monks, Ely, Lavenham, Kersey, and they eventually um, went with Kersey, uh, which is such a beautiful village. Um, it's, a, it's a good village for filming because you don't have to drive through it to get anywhere. Um, so it's easily controlled for filming. So they actually closed Kersey, the, the street, the main street in Kersey for two weeks, and they transformed it into um, not only 1950s Kersey, but also present day Kersey. Um, and you've got to watch the series because it's just, there's, Suff it, there's so many Suffolk locations in it. We've got of Wood Woodbridge in East Suffolk mentioned all the time. And they did some filming at Woodbridge train station. Um, Ipswich doubled as London. And that's really interesting to see how they made that work. They sort of did the wide shots actually in London. And then they did a lot of close up shots around Ipswich. Um, they did lots of driving shots around the county. And it was, it, it was, it was a really good, um, good project for us to work on. Um, you can see in the background of the photo at the moment, the, the, the coloured houses um, and they were repainted for the series and then painted back afterwards. Um, the pub that they're standing in front of was used as a location, not only as a, one of the major locations in the series, but it also had all the lots of facilities out the back in the garden. It had loos and catering and extras, uh, sporting artists were all sort of held there. So. They used the church on the, on the hill. Um, the previous picture showed um, the actor Daniel May standing on top of those steps and just looks down into the village. So it's just a perfect, picture perfect location. Um, in terms of sort of engagement for local businesses, uh, we had a really nice email, which I'm just going to read you a little bit of, um, from the art director, Miriam, who worked in Kersey and helped transform the town. Um, and she sent us this, um, this email saying, I consciously used local labour in Suffolk whenever I could. Me, Kay, Tim, our chippy, Russ, our propman, Charlotte, all came, all were all local. Um, I used Arthur Backle, a Kersey resident, for all our external flower dressing, and we chose his garden and used it as a location. Rachel, the church warden, and her team provided, pro provided all the internal church flowers for filming. I hired a local electrician for pat testing all our lights. He was the husband of the bar lady at the Bell in Kersey. I hired a local painter for interiors of um, the River House and other local painter for all the exterior paintings of the street. Um, I hired a few of the Kersey residents to use their period and contemporary vehicles for set dressing. Uh, Wendy and Janet from the Bell provided and cooked locally sourced period food. Um, for the filming. Um, her, the husband's painted the interior of the pub for us and sourced lots of local period props. We used Roy, a local undertaker, as our set advisor. He provided props and grave diggers for the programme. 
Um, I bought all the dressing for our bread shop, set dressing from the local farm shop. I mean, it just goes on and on. There's so many ways that businesses, local businesses have benefited from this um, production. So it's just a really nice sort of example of how businesses can get, get involved with, uh, with filming. Um, another very, uh, you know, big benefit from, from filming is the, uh, is the film tourism that it brings. Um, I think The Dig is probably the best project that we've worked on to sort of illustrate this. Obviously, the excitement around filming and the way it makes locations look gets people interested. And I'm sure Kersey's going to get, and the pub in Kersey, are going to get lots of visitors from, 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 that, from that filming happening and people seeing it and thinking, gosh, that's a beautiful, beautiful village I'd like to see there. Um, but the dig, we sort of have real sort of tangible um, information about how that production has has helped with the tourism in the area and got people into the county. Um, we we always try to work very closely with um, the DMOs and um, local tourism bodies. Um, we try and do sort of have a sort of joint approach with press releases. We always get together and we share all our information. Um, and yeah, the the um, Sutton Hoo uh, recorded their largest visitor numbers um, it last August since the site opened in 2002. And they attribute that directly to the result of, of the dig being filmed in the county. Um, we also, you know, we uh, the, the Angel Hotel in Bury St Edmunds, which was the um, site for... Uh, the personal history of David Copperfield, they turned the whole of the Angel Square in front of the Angel Hotel into um, Victorian London. Um, and that was just a brilliant day's filming. Um, they just, in post-production, they put St Paul's Cathedral in the background and it just, you just suddenly you're in London. Um, and yes, that, and that, that, that has um, done, you know, that's been really great for both St Edmunds as well, for visitor numbers. Um, productions like Along for the Ride, um, which was a sort of, it's a, a, you know, a, a, it was comedian David O'Doherty cycling around the county, um, around East Suffolk. Um, he was only in East Suffolk. He went from, I think, around um, Rendlesham Way and then travelled and cycled, cycled all the way through to, to Blytheborough, through Blytheborough, and then he came to Walberswick and over to Southwold. And programmes like that just give... Um, you know they do so much for like he got, he got went on the ferry the Wolfswick Southwold ferry um it's just such a great advert for uh for the county when things like that film here and it was really great to help them with route planning and tell them interesting things they might not know about the county about East Suffolk um final slide of picture this is a film that filmed in Lavenham another one of our very pretty quintessentially Suffolk villages and they filmed last summer. Um, that's not out yet, but watch out for that one. It's called Cold Harbour Lane, um, which will be out later this year. And these are just an example of all the productions since, since we launched. I mean, we don't only work on films. Um, obviously they get the most sort of limelight, but we also do a lot of te a television series. Um, yeah, Walks with Kate Humble was a really good one for East Suffolk. It had, um, you know, it's, they, I also, another job that I do is I row the Wolfswick to uh, Southwold Ferry and whenever I'm working on a Sunday afternoon, which is my, my, my usual shift, people are always coming to me and saying, we're coming, we're on this ferry because of, we saw it on walks with Kate Humble. I mean, the amount of people have said that. So it's really great for, for an area to, to, get, to get filming. So we're just trying to bring more and more in. Um, but we also do photo shoots, um, quite a lot of those, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to sort of take over for a bit, and I'm going to, we're going to talk about one particular project, which is very relevant to East Suffolk, um, and it was a production that was um, called The Power. That's an Amazon series, and we uh, we they got in touch with us sort of uh, around this time last year, or perhaps a bit later, um, and they were looking for very last minute. They were looking for a location on a cliff where they could do a massive set build to be part of a ten part series. So um, they came in and it was all kind of very short notice, which is the way that it quite often works in the film industry. 
um, and they came in and they basically picked a, a site just off East Lane um, in Bordsey, and they came in and they had to build a set which had two, two and a half months prep where they build. You can see there's the outline, the start of the, of the structure that they built on the cliff edge. And because this was an area of outstanding natural beauty, um, we, we went through planning and worked with East Suffolk Council on the planning for the build. And it came in and they, they prepped for sort of two and a half months. They had a one month shooting period. And then it was about two to two and a half months strike. And a strike means take down and return to how it was before. And because obviously you can see there's a very large construction going on, one of the things that we insisted from the very outset was the environmental aspects of them building this structure and then taking it down. Originally, they were going to take it down in about two weeks and just bring demolition crews in. But after discussions with the production, uh, we arranged an environmental breakdown of the of all the facilities. Um, and it went down to the fact that there was a soil sifting at the very end. So there was not a single item that was left over because this is an agricultural field that's owned by a farmer and he's got a crop rotation, a crop plan. Um, and it's really important that the soil was back to how it was um, after the actual shoot came on. But the economic impact, what, what does that mean when a, a shoot like this comes in? We had 300 crew working on the set during the month shooting. So if you think those 300 crew, they all need somewhere to stay, they all need to be fed, um, and they need to be looked after while they're there. Um, and so that's 300 times 30 nights. Um, and then we also had the construction crew where we had up to 100 carpenters working on site in the prep and then similarly in the takedown later on. And we did some, some rough estimations on the number of hotel nights that it brought into the region. And we think that it was about 15,000 hotel nights just for this one production. And because of the situation where it is on the coast, the production company didn't want to bring in facilities from London. They wanted to support the local economy. Um, and they used local companies for, for kind of chippies, for carpenters, for generators, for waste, for cleaning. And we're going to be chatting to George in a bit um, because he got heavily involved with the production on that side of things. And then the set was, was recycled. Now, when we take into account things like location fees and money spent on local suppliers, we think in that four to five month period, 1.2 million pound, 1.2 million pounds was brought into the local economy, which is obviously a considerable amount. Um, and they're able to recycle, we reckon, we estimate 97% of all the materials that we use. So the carbon impact is, is has been brought, brought down. So what I'm going to do now is we've talked very briefly about the, the power down at Bordsey. Now, there's a, um, we're going to bring in a gentleman called George that runs a company called VivoClean. Um, and VivoClean had never worked on a film set before. Um, and without me, I'm not trying to put you down, George, but you had no experience of working on a film set. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the film industry in Suffolk is quite a burgeoning industry. We're seeing lots of people have facilities and services which you wouldn't think necessarily would be traditional film sort of supply companies. Uh, but cleaning, when you've got 300 people working in a location for a day, requires it, there's a big demand for cleaning, going around and sorting things out. And also making things as sure as sanitised because the whole of the power filming last year was done under very strict COVID procedures. And when we get a production company like Amazon coming in, they don't follow standard government guidelines. They have their own worldwide standards. So um, every member of crew was PCR tested on a very regular basis. And obviously desanitation. Um, is a very important aspect. So we're going to have a quick Q&A with George um, in a few moments, uh, but we thought we'd give George a quick opportunity to do, just sort of do a couple of minutes on who Vivo Clean is so that you can understand more when we come on to the Q&A later on. So George, I'm going to hand over to you and, and do your first slide. Uh, yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, thank you for, for, for having me. Um, um, here today. So um, I'm just going to um, just run through a, a very brief overview about us and um, kind of where we are at as a company and the sort of like the journey we've been on. Um, so if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so yeah, so our, our mission statement in effect is, um, um, you know, we, we, we have a vision to raise the standards within the industry. So that's what we've set up to do um, from the word go. So um, 
you know, initially when we set out, it was end of tenancy and deep cleaning, commercial cleans, you know, a variety of different venues in that, uh, builders and sort of construction cleans. And uh, we're very pleased to be able to add on um, events slash filming cleaning as well, um, which is definitely something we want to do a lot more of because it was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, next slide, please. Um, so um, I think, you know, what ties in quite nicely, um, uh, which is obviously I mentioned previously, previously is that we uh, we look to use uh, eco-friendly possible, uh, eco-friendly uh, chemicals wherever possible, um, chemicals that are not tested on animals, um, uh, and all of our materials are are, are, are recyclable. Um, so um, you know we sort of look to use uh, as many one size fits all. Uh, products, which you know was 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 quite relevant in the uh, in the filming. So there's not millions and millions of plastic bottles everywhere. Um, we, uh, we we we've managed to uh, to mitigate the needs of different products, uh, which helps help lower our carbon footprint on that project, um, as well as everything else we've been we've been involved in. Um, next slide, please. Uh, just a couple of examples of some of the work that we've done. Um, so on the construction side, so um, yeah, we, uh, we 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 don't mind it being uh, uh, particularly grim. Um, our, our, our staff are mental and they really enjoy that. So um, so yeah, that's just a, just a small example of uh, of that there. That was some scaffolding around a uh, building in Ipswich, which is having uh, having quite a lot of work done on it. Um, next slide, please. Um, again, just another example of some of the work that we uh, that we've done. Um, just to just to outline, um, kind of more more of what we, what we traditionally do, um, having sort of turned our our hand to the uh, to the filming in the summer. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so yeah, just, just where we where we're at uh, as a company. So we just had our first birthday. Um, so to be involved in something like the power in, in the summer was was truly remarkable. To be honest with you, um, I must have uh, chewed the producer's ear off enough on the phone to, to, to give us a chance, which is great. Um, um, so we uh, we managed to turn over a. Um, over a course of a million in our first year, um, which has been fantastic. And um, I'll be more than happy to go into some numbers um, with regards to the, the filming specifically, but that was a big contributor in, into our success in the first year. Um, and, you know, our plans for this year is to, is to keep expanding, keep growing, uh, keep developing all our staff that we've got. And, um, you know, we, you know, after our experience last summer, I mean, uh, particularly Jim uh, uh, specifically, um, you know, after we've done that gig in the summer, I've not left him alone. You know, come on, when's the, when's the next filming happening? When's the next filming happening? So we do want to get more involved in the events uh, industry, you know, whether that is festivals or, or, or whether that is uh, filming, um, you know, that, that, that really was a great deal of fun for, uh, for me, my colleagues, all the rest of our staff. And, um, and obviously, uh, from a business point of view, it, it 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 made a great deal of difference as well. So, um, and I think that is my last slide. Great. Okay. So we're now just going to go into a quick um, Q and A. I will. I'm just going to come out of the screen share so that we actually see each other for the recording. So there we go. So, um, so George, just sort of to chat to you a bit about. The filming and that sort of stuff we've got sort of probably about six seven questions to kind of ask you so um how did you hear about the filming in Bordsy? um i didn't really i didn't know anything about it until i got a phone call completely out of the blue from a uh from one of the uh assistant producers um based in london uh from sister pictures um the the uh the, the company sort of behind it all um and they were just they were just inquiring to see whether we we might have some people available um, locally just to help out um, with the um, with some cleaning on on set whilst whilst they were building the set. So during the construction phase, um, you know that was all. You know, I think because of because of the impact of 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 COVID and things like that you know, it, it sort of made us quite an important cog within the operations. So they were very keen to, to get someone local in and the conversations went really well. Um, and yeah, there we were sort of every day in the, uh, in the vacant sun whilst, uh, whilst the uh, construction of the set was going on. So um, that was initially started anyway. 
Yeah, and have you worked in, in TV or film production before? I, I certainly have not. I've watched yeah. some TV before. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But um, but no, um, in terms of in terms of that side of thing, no, not at all. Um, not in a not in a past cleaning life, or uh, or indeed, um, you know, as Vivo clean. So yeah, it was yeah. it was completely new. Um, and I mean, one of the things that you find in the TV industry is that if your face fits and you do a good job and you're a hard worker, mm-hmm. you crew will get taken from from job to job to job, and they become like a, a traveling circus almost, sort of. Um, you said that you mentioned um, that they got you in originally to do some cleaning during the setup, during the construction. Mm-hmm. How did the job evolve and what did it eventually end up becoming? Yeah, so um, they, had, um, they had us in um, for, for around two months. Um, we, had, uh, we had one staff member a day on, on set whilst they were building, um, as well as three deep cleans during the week because they're long days that... The, the construction teams were there for 12, 14 hours a day sometimes. We would have a staff member there all, um, all day as well. And um, we'd do three deep cleans sort of overnight as well whilst we were there. So to be honest with you, at that point, we were three or four months into our into our journey as a business. I thought, God, this is all right. This is quite nice. You know, some regular income and things like that. So that was great. Um, and then, you know, I think sort of got closer to when they were filming. I got... I got another uh, another phone call from uh, from one of the producers and just they they said that you know look you guys have been great you've, you know you've been so reliable you're doing a really good job the locations team you know are really getting on well with your staff and the the communication has been brilliant how would you feel about um, you know staying with us for the uh, for the duration of the filming um, and at that point, I thought, yeah, brilliant. You know, that'd be great. Maybe an extra extra cleaner or two a day. Um, not really understanding the, uh, the the full scale of things. Um, you know, all I can say is I was glad I was sitting down when they actually told me, you know, what was going to be required from us. Yeah. Um, but but naturally, um, it was something that we were really happy to take on. And, you know, then it went from, you know, having sort of one person a day to, 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 to well, it was 10 people a day plus three people on a um on a on a night shift cleaning um and you know so over a 24 hour period you know I had sort of anywhere between 12 and 14 members of staff out so that was that was huge for us at, at a you know at the time and um you know there's ordering n- um numbers of products and and supplies and you know, I've never seen so many bin liners in all my life. We've still yeah. got loads left, which is just incredible. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it, it, it escalated quite quickly. To be honest with you, it was one minute we were yeah. plodding along and doing a really good job, and then I said, "Yeah, come with us. Um, that would be great." So fantastic. And it all so, And how's how's working with a film production company different to your normal jobs? Uh, complete mayhem. Um, yeah. You, um, you you need to be really flexible. Um, I yeah. think that was very difficult for me in the start because I had it all set out and had all these plans and then, you know, everything changes, the times changes, oh, the moon's going to be over there tonight, so we've got to start filming at this time. To, we need yeah. the moonlighting right. And it was just a little bit crazy, really. And, you know, we had to be really, really adaptable to everything. Um, but it was it was it was a super experience and you know everyone's very um everyone's very straight talking there there's no uh um there's no sort of bs or anything like that it's um you know everyone's pretty straight down the line but you know everyone yeah. was super helpful the 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 production company i dealt with so many good people there who yeah. were who were super supportive of us um you know undertaking that project fantastic and, and what what surprised you the most about the experience of working with a film production company? Um, I think it's just the shame of everything, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, how many people are involved? Because, you know, I remember, you know, when they when they had the location set for during the uh, for during the filming, because obviously we were just based over the, where the actual construction set was happening. Yes. Yeah. Then there's the, uh, you know, the uh, the locations where you've got all the. Uh, all the trailers and the honey wagons and I saw the big open space and then I came back a week later and it was just a complete circus. Couldn't believe what I was seeing. And um, yeah, I, I just think that the, the sheer volume of everything, the 
experts that they've got there from so many different fields. Um, you know, it was it it was you know quite quite a lot to take uh, to take in really. But it was uh, yeah, just just the sheer volume of everything was yeah. was incredible. Really was great. Now, just just a couple of questions, sort of a couple of final questions. What what was the the best or the most amazing experience that you had was there like a moment during the months that you were down there that you kind of thought wow what's going on here <laughs> well to be honest with you i think it was the first day when we had um when of the of the filming and i went up there with all the staff and met the so you know for us as a business it was it was seeing you know a dozen people standing there um, all there to do the same job at the same venue, all wearing Vivo clean high visors. Yeah. And we hadn't even thought of the logo six months earlier. And it yeah. was just like, so that was that was incredible. But yeah, again, I've seen seeing all the all the trailers. That was another that, another um remarkable experience. And you know, seeing the set and you know, some of the actors and things like that. Um, and we we shared our our uh our our sort of cleaners corner our, our marquee was it was in there with the extras and i think again this was on one of the first days so we had our cleaners corner in the cupboard where we've got all our um our cleaners cupboard in the corner where we had all our all our stock our supplies and all yeah. our paperwork and stuff and and then yeah looking across we you know i walk in and there's my cleaners there and there's loads of nuns and police walking about yeah. and i thought what is going on here yeah. um so surreal, <laughs> yeah, yeah that was quite a quite a surreal moment as well yeah. so very different right Great. And then just really the final question is, um, what advice would you give to other businesses who are interested at in work in the film and TV industry? Advice would be to do it because it's a life changing experience, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you know, you get to see the other side of so many different things. Uh, so so absolutely, absolutely to do it. And and although it could be uh, um you know, sometimes it could be a little bit of a daunting thing to get involved in. I think even in five years time, if I had to take them out for the first time, it would have been crazy. But, but yeah, just to um, just to get stuck in and to um, yeah to 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 take your chance if you uh, if you ever get the opportunity to speak to someone within that industry. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of experience, it's second to none. And 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 from a business point of view, you know, there's there's so much revenue to be made from something like that um you know so it's uh it, it's it's a it's a win-win all round to be honest with you fantastic well george thank you very much for giving us your time no problem at all um you're welcome to hang around um and if any questions come up sort of help us out with those yeah uh, but th thank you very much for your time and letting us know about your journey with feed no problem at all thank you for having me great yeah so, thank you thanks george that's a really really interesting i hadn't heard all that so that was really yeah it's really good <laughs> Good to hear all that. Um, I didn't know you'd only started a year ago as well. It's amazing. <laughs> a, bit, a, a, a bit of mayhem this first year. Yeah. yeah. You know, here's, here's the second year. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah okay, we're just going to go back to the slideshow. Is that, can you see that? Is that, yeah. Yep, yeah, great. Okay, so, so back to you, Rachel. yeah, so, um, so there's lots of ways that uh, you as businesses can get involved with um, with, the, with Screen Suffolk and with the screen industries generally. The best way to start is to register with us as um, register your company with us. So we have we have pages for on set catering, cleaning companies, obviously. Um, vehicle hire you know taxis things like that productions need everything that you know, electricians anything that you can any sort of transferable skills that could be useful just get in touch and we'll um put your company up on on our website and that's completely free of charge um yeah if you've also if you've got a locate an interesting location even not even a house you know that you think might be a good you want a, a good location you can um just go to our website and easily sort of register your location. We'll get back in touch with you, send you a very uh, location agreement. Um, we'll either come take photographs, you can send us photographs and we'll get you up on the location hub and then you'll be sent out to location managers as a possible um, a location. You can see just that tiny image, there's a Framingham Technology Centre on there and they did a lot of work with um, the detectorists and not, not not as a location so much, but the detectorists actually um, used the the site as for storage. They have a couple of large sort of garages. So there's just it's just good to have if you've got your images up there. There's lots of ways. It doesn't just have to be as a filming location. 
uh, next. If, you're, if you'd like to um, register with us as crew, um, if you're thinking of a change <laughs> um, and you want to try and try your hand at sort of entry level um, things on set, you can register with us. Uh, if you're a supporting artist, you can register with us as well. You can do that via our website. Um, next slide. Uh, we have a registration for career and training opportunities. Um, so you can register your interest in um, yeah, change, you know, changing your career or, or training or just, yeah. Uh, and these, this picture here is um, from the set of uh, Magpie Murders. Um, and when you watch the series, which hopefully you'll get to do soon on BritBox, um, they use Suffolk One as um, the location for, uh, for, for a hospital exterior, um, hence the ambulance. Um, and the locations team um, actually did a talk with uh, some of the students there to talk about how the um, film industry works. And that's really important to us to really sort of encourage productions to sort of engage with young people, or, you know, when they come here to film. Um, so that was a really nice, nice experience for the students there to see, see the sort of production in action. Okay, and then just just to sort of pick up from what Rachel was saying about sort of uh, local skills and people looking to get opportunities to get into the industry because there is a skill shortage at the moment for the film and TV industry. And um, these are all the people that are registered with us with um, registered for us for work experience and sort of getting their first break into the industry. Um, we quite often do presentations at the FE and HE colleges around the county. Um, and we're always looking for sort of people that perhaps might be a hairdresser that are kind of interested in transferring those skills. And we can guide people if you get in touch with us sort of on almost switch over courses, hand over courses where you might be trained as a hairdresser, but actually you could go in and do hair and makeup for, for TV and, and for film. And also one thing which is being introduced in the first course was running Suffolk just before Christmas last year. Uh, which is an opportunity for young people between the ages of, I think, 18 and 21 to do a course that um, Screen Seal Skills and Film Fixer, who are the holding company for Screen Suffolk. Um, and we're now running three day courses to get people ready to go onto set. Um, so it's, it's a course of people that are looking for their first step, but don't have any physical experience on a film set. And this over three days, prepares them to go onto a film set and they get taught how th things like how to read a call sheet, which is the information sheet that lays out what's happening each day. Um, and also very basic skills, which are really important, like how to use a radio and where to stand on set. And it gives young people the confidence to go out and start their career. And at the back, off the back of this three day course, we, when a production comes in, then arrange for them to have paid work on a film that's, that's shooting within the region. So, that's kind of an overview of who Screen Suffolk is, what we do and how we can kind of help um, and how you can get involved in the local local film industry. Um, you've now got an opportunity if anybody would like to ask any questions, um, then they're very welcome to do that or so you can get in contact with us via the links on the screen. So thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Rachel. And thank you, George. That was a very interesting presentation. And it's great to hear really what, you know, what, what is happening um, across Suffolk with the, uh, the film and television industry. So I don't think we have any uh, further questions, um, but um, I, th uh, which means I think we can close the meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks for having That's us. Really Thank you all. Thank you. Catch up soon. Thank you, George, as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Simon. Thank you.